Artificial intelligence is a big word in image editing right now. Adobe Max introduced a sky replacement to Adobe Photoshop and using the Adobe Sensei. And Skylum Software has introduced Luminar AI. It's still in early beta and I have access to that early beta and I will show you how it works. Very interesting image editing software that can help you make better images. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard. I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer for Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about Luminar AI, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear and this time about Luminar AI and its capabilities of making you a better photographer. And I have to say that this is early beta version of the Luminar AI that I have access to. Some things might be a bit different when it's actually released. So this is just a introduction about the logic and the AI, uh, how it works in Luminar and how they have uh, implemented the AI into image editing. And I have here images. I will show you how I would edit them in Luminar AI. And of course, so, sh so some of the so sh show some of the, that's a hard word. So show some of the features that it has. And there are two ways of starting to edit an image. You can use the templates, which I will get back to in a bit, or you can just edit straight the way you like to do it. You just uh, start up using the tools that you have been used to. But I think the templates, which are kind of like a starting point and here, the AI is actually interpreting the image that you are about to uh, edit and it will give you some starting points on the templates. If it's a landscape, it will most likely give you a landscape uh, suitable template. And then all the template has different or different amounts of presets or I, I wouldn't say them presets. Okay, they are kind of presets, but they, they are uh, called uh, templates in Luminar AI and there will be some more now they most of these have only five but there will be more when the uh, software is released. Let's look at this image that I took in February in Strasbourg. First I would try and see what the AI can do with the cropping of this image and yeah I think the crop like this is a bit better than my original one and then if we look at the templates after that and let's first try the sunsets. You have Argent, Dreamfilm, Hyperdrive, Impact and Toscana. Let's try Toscana, how it looks. I haven't tried this before, so this is experimenting. Well, no, this one isn't really good. Dreamfilm, which is quite interesting also. No, not this one. But the Impact actually is a good starting point for this image, I would say. And after you have tried the different uh, 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 templates, then you can edit them. All those that are brighter in white are the uh, things or tools that have been used on that particular template. And I think that one is a good starting point for this image. And let's go back to the templates. There's one thing that I forgot to say. You have down here, you have a slider where you can uh, uh, lower the amount of the uh, effect of the template. So there are lots and lots of uh, possibilities to use the templates and I, I really like the, the approach that Luminar AI has taken with this because as they said the biggest problem in image editing for most is that uh, people do not know where to start and that's something that is really interesting because for me you know I've been doing so many years it's, it's not a problem. I know what I want from my images, but I can understand that if you're really new into photography and image editing, it can be a bit overwhelming to start it. But uh, as I said many times, all digital images need some editing. So I think Luminar AI has, has a very good point in that. But let's continue with another image. Let's try this image that I took also in Strasbourg. There was this man sitting and I went behind him and took this candid shot of him. As you can see this is uh, ETTR and it doesn't look really that good. Let's see what templates does it 
Let's try experimental, how, how they do that. Let's, let's try glow, what it looks like. Well, no, <laughs> no, color ramp, no, cold frame, no, burned film, no, feathered light, no. This doesn't work. We can uh, reset it, reset adjustments and go to another. Let's try the sunsets because uh, dream film is the one that works with this image, in my opinion at least. I think it gives the same feeling that I had when I made the image. And I think this is a good example of having a good, a nice starting point. Then we can go back to edits. So one thing that I would like to do is it's a bit washed out blacks and let's see where I, I don't know if this is, uh, let's see the shadow, darken the shadows a bit and uh, let's try a smart contrast. I started with a template and edit it to template. And what's great about this too is also that you go down here and I can save this as a template. If I made a very uh, pleasing image or the edit was very pleasing and I want to use that template as my own template in the future with the similar images, then I can just save it and apply that template to a new image. And I think that's really good thing because then you can actually kind of uh, make your own style with your edits. Because usually the problem is that, as I said earlier, we don't know where to start is also we don't uh, have anything consistent in our mind. Our images look all over the place. We, we might have 10, 15 really nice images, but they all look different. They don't go together. But with these templates, you might want to start having a style. And I'm not saying that just to grab the templates that are already there. You can uh, edit them and then make it your own look or template in this case. And I think that's something to really consider. And that might be really a good thing. But let's continue. Let's go back to catalog. This portrait, which is uh, not very flattering, as you can see the light. Okay, the, the direction of the light is nice, but it's, it's totally too bright and my skin looks really horrible on this one. Well, sometimes it is horrible. <laughs> but anyways, if we go to this portrait place, there is one fun thing that I will so first we go to face and uh, then there is the eyes and I have an original eyes on this image now they are my eyes but they are pretty dark what I can do is to make uh, my brown eyes look better I don't know if you saw that but as you can see the eyes are a lot better looking now than not now they look look better and also I, I uh, can have a iris uh, iris flare and as you can see, there will be some over here, some uh, bright areas. And then you can enlarge eyes, which is, to be honest, not very, <laughs> not very good. Dark circles removal, what it does, it will brighten a bit if you have dark circles around the eye. On my eye, it doesn't look very good. And then you can make the eyebrows pop a bit. Then there is this funny thing. And what we could do, we could try the cat eye. Look at this. This is pretty cool. Always remember when, when editing portraits like this, don't overdo it because you can ruin it. And then we have this image that I took actually yesterday evening in downtown Helsinki with the Mitacon 17mm f095 lens. And let's see what uh, templates Luminar AI suggests. We have the Blockbuster and Teal and Orange. No, it doesn't work on this. Beyond the Wall. No. Film Noir, that's an interesting one. And yeah, that, that could actually work. The, the background is a bit too bright. What about Cyberpunk? Shanghai. And as I said earlier, there's only five, uh, pre, or, not presets, but uh, templates on each. But there will be more when the final version of Luminar AI is released. Let's see what else do they have. Natural Skies, After Hours, because this was taken after hours, so-called. And let's see what it, what it does to this image. Yeah. This, this could be more of more of this and let's go to edits and see and let's see the the professional first and you know highlight contrast in highlight balance you can actually lower the highlights a bit and uh, let's see color harmony color contrast yeah this one this one is getting more towards the way the image looked when I 
uh, was taking the image or making this image. And then we can change the hue, as you can see here, split color warmth. We can, you know, warm it up and make the some cooler. You know, this is a very good way of making fast edits. And I think this, to be honest, this one is more intuitive than, than, than if, when you open up Photoshop for the first time or, or Lightroom for the first time. Well, Lightroom is, is quite good. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick tour of Luminar AI early beta version and what, what it can do. And um, as I said, I really appreciate the way Luminar has thought the, the image editing process. It's a bit different than the normal way and it's, it's, um, it's interesting and, and I'm really looking forward to the final version and see where it's heading. And I still want to say that this was the early beta version and some of the things might uh, have different names and the tools might have changed to a different place or something might even be taken away and something might be brought in. So that's why I didn't go deep into the user interface more than this. It was just the introduction of how this software works. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.